Welcome, 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 and one more welcome to everybody. Part of our continuing series where we talk about political division in America, the state of it. How bad is it and what can be done? We're talking to philosophers, reporters, columnists, activists, writers, reporters, thinkers, professors, anyone from the left, from the right. We don't care. My opinion doesn't matter. We don't have an agenda. It's to make sure that informed commentary gets directly to you, the public, so that you have to do this thing that's not that popular anymore called thinking for yourself. Yeah, that's what they taught me in high school, and I'm bringing it back. I know, not popular, a little crazy. That's fine. With us today is John Horvath II. Uh, he's a writer at the Imaginative Conservative. He also works at the Tradition on Family and Prosperity, and he is the author of the book Return to Order. Sorry about that. Uh, that's the article that he wrote where we're talking about three reasons national mm -hmm. divorce could shatter America by John Horvat at the Imaginative Conservative. Uh, John Horvat II is a scholar, researcher, educator, international speaker, and author of the book Return to Order, as well as the author of hundreds of published essays. He lives in Spring Grove, Pennsylvania, where he is the vice president of the American Society for the Defense of Tradition, Family, and property. And today we're going to be talking about this article, Three Reasons Why a National Divorce Would Shatter America. Did I get anything wrong with your bio? Is there anything we need to correct or anything you'd like to say about your bio, your background? No, that's pretty much it. I'm just, uh, I do a lot of writing and, and teaching and um, uh, interviews <laughs> about these topics. Um, the book, Return to Order, is a book that what's wrong with our culture and, and our economy and how, how how the two are related and this topic is definitely part of that that uh, that subject i was wondering if there was overlap between the impetus and the you know the reason why you wrote the book and talking about national divorce both of them seem to look at a perilous future for america and how to avoid it or get out of it um Let's get right to the meat and potatoes. Why did you write this essay and why did you write it recently? You're an American. You're a thinker. What's going on in America? And, and imagine this is for somebody who's uninitiated, like they just mm -hmm. woke up in a cave. Um, why did you write this essay? What, is this an important topic? What's going on right now? Why did you think this was worth discussing? Well, it is in the news. Um, these the immediate uh, cause of the article was a commentary by Marjorie Taylor Greene, where she talked about a national divorce between, well, pretty much red states and blue states, or red counties or blue counties or red and blue, whatever. And so uh, it is it is getting a lot of traction out there. There are a lot of people who are in favor of different degrees of, succe of successions from, the, from uh, one, one from the other. And so it is uh, a lot of people are talking about. It. I think it's 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 an issue that's not going to go away and we need to discuss it. It has to be we, we need to uh, develop you know, the reasons why, in my case, I think that we shouldn't uh, have um, any type of national divorce. Um, the issue is not going to go away. There are some critics who say that by discussing it, you make it likely. Um, but it seems that you're saying, hey, this is an important issue. And while I'm against it, I think the way to deal with it is to discuss it. What would you say to critics who say, don't discuss it at all? Um, you discussing it is bad for America. What would your response be? No, I mean, it is a, it is a political reality that there is great division and polarization in the country. Uh, this is something that is um, the and, – and these – and this polarization has only become worse and worse uh, with each election cycle. And so to, de to deny the reality of what's happening is not, is not gonna make it go away. To throw money at it is not going to make it go away. Uh, there are very, very uh, profound reasons for what is happening. And those are the things that need to be addressed. You can't just, just uh, when you ignore something, it is an escape. It's, some, it's, it's a wishful thinking. Uh, it will tear our country apart, and I don't want to see our country torn apart. I just find you're in a unique position because you're saying, I don't necessarily agree with what Marjorie's talking about, but I do believe we should discuss it. And 
I saw a lot of criticism the day after she made her famous tweet on President's Day saying we need a national divorce because red and blue can't live together. And then I saw a lot of liberals, liberal news organizations. Oh, Marjorie, you idiot. There's no national divorce. You are making division by talking about this. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those liberal media critics? Well, I mean, it's, it's simply not true. Uh, most of these issues are liberal issues that are being imposed upon the nation. You know, things like drag queen story hours, things like uh, the transgender agenda. All these are very strong moral issues that are attacking the status quo. They're not, they're not introducing anything new. And so the, uh, if anyone is to blame for the divisions that are taking place in our country, I would say would be the liberals from much more than the conservatives. And this is just one way in which they use to, to uh, gaslight or throw, throw, uh, throw the blame on us. And I, I, don't, I, I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's, it, we, there is definitely a debate and we should, we should debate it. Um. I love the fact that you are a well-informed conservative, so I'm going to ask you a few more questions about that, uh, if I may. So yes. liberal, because you're, I liked your answer. I liked your response to this. Um, liberals, you're saying national division, liberals are more responsible for that than conservatives. Liberals would say Donald Trump was a divisive figure. We never mm -hmm. had an American president who came in and said, I don't really like you guys before. That's kind of true. I'm not taking a stance on Trump for the nature of this article. I'm just saying raw facts. Trump came in. He was a little bit, these are my people. That's not your people. They're pointing at that and saying that's that's different. There's some historical measure there. They're also pointing at January 6th and saying, whoa, that's, that's next level uh, disruptive. You said that liberals are more responsible for national division than conservatives. What would you say to liberals who say, oh, yeah, what about those two things? Well, I mean, that it's not to deny that those liberals are that the, these uh, these divisions are real, and that uh, the, the conservatives are not involved on them and are not pushing back. But a lot of it is pushback and not push forward. What we're seeing on the part of the liberals is much more, you know, in your face, trying to put, impose a, a a liberal system, a um, a, a morality that is foreign to our national heritage and uh, upon a upon a population so uh if any i think the aggressive party is the is the liberal party but that's not to say that the fight is not is not strong and and does not lead to two incidents like the, the two that you mentioned i mean of course we could mention the two other uh incidents like the black lives matter riots and and uh, you know a lot of the other issues that took place during the COVID time so uh it's not a you know, it's it. There is a fight going on. It's a very it is a. I think it is a very important fight. But um, you know, we are not to blame. I mean, I think if anyone has the 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 shock of so many things that are happening today is is causing pushback and not pushing forward like the other side. I really appreciate your answers. I appreciate you being willing to let me ask you some difficult, awkward questions and giving mm -hmm. sensitive answers to them. I appreciate it. Instead of just uh, sound bites that you heard. I, that's exactly what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get past the sound bites to what's going on. Okay, let's get to the essay. Why is national divorce not the answer? Um, I'm hearing from you that Boy, we do have problems in America. There really is some issue between left and right, red or blue. It seems to be going on for a while. Maybe it's not unreasonable. I don't think you said this, but I'm getting this impression from you. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's not a reasonable to say this is a serious issue and it's it's bad. It's not it's not just, oh, that's mildly annoying. It's like, no, this is a bad issue that could get really bad. Uh, the floorboards on the ship are rotting away. That means we could all sink and die together um why uh why not back her then i mean why why you're saying division is bad it's been there this is an important issue it is real we have to deal with this but i don't like her solution why not why not embrace her solution well because uh as you say we're on the ship the ship is is sinking it has major problems 
and we're both sides are on this on the ship and to say simply that we should divide the ship up or take <laughs> take you know to to divide to uh to endanger the whole ship simply because of of, our, of those differences i think is something that's that will uh will will end up splintering the nation once you agree to some type of divorce it will only lead to another divorce and so once you start breaking up the country into red states and blue states you'll eventually go to red counties and blue counties red red cities and and blue blue cities red neighborhoods blue neighborhoods um I don't want that. I don't want to start that process going. I think we need to. We need to discuss this. We need to to hold together, even though it is not a an ideal situation. Uh, but our nation will uh, will split up. Our enemies will take advantage of our of of our fighting. And uh, you know, it's. I think it's wishful thinking to think that you know we could everything could just be split up. You know, 50, 50, so 60, 60, 40, and Everyone will live, live happily ever after. We are inextricably um, intermixed between us, so that there really is no ruby red and and you know super blue sections of the country. We're mixed up, you know, ones intermixed with each other, and so you will never ever get that pure division that 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 most people are talking about. Um. Okay, but to pull something you said, and I'm I'm going to pick on you just because you're doing really well, not not to be mean or anything, but I I, I hope you understand. I, we asked yeah, questions, no but problem. we let people know. Here here it's coming. You know, no gotcha journalism. It's coming. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm you know they're coming. Okay. Um, transgender story time. Yes. Women having abortions. Um, thirty before age thirty. Mm -hmm. uh, you name it. Sounds like you're not exactly for that. I've talked to other conservatives and they're not for that too. How do we get people to come together? Because I know a lot of liberals. Hell no, you're not going to take away a woman's right to choose. Right. And uh, you are basically a Nazi discriminating. If this guy wants to dress up in a dress and go talk to two and four year olds and tell them that's a cool thing to do, how dare you mm -hmm. take away his rights? Um, how do we bring people together over those issues? Well, I mean, in a lot of these cases, these issues are uh, you're not going to convert the other side. I'm not I don't I don't have any illusions because I know I've I've protested too many times in front of these places. Uh, but we do need to we do need to fight. We need to, do need to keep in to be be engaged in the culture to disengage from the culture is one of the worst possible things you can do. Uh, I am an enemy of the Benedict option that says, you know, we simply get into our little communities, stay in our communities and, and live again, live happily ever after. It doesn't work that way. We're in, we're engaged in a culture war. And I don't think I don't. And I have, I have read liberals who say the, 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 the outcome is not decided. And we, and we, until that outcome is decided, we need to be engaged in that fight. How does this work? I can't convince liberals of conservative values. We can't get past these certain issues. Polarization is horrible, but let's not split up. It. I'm sorry, but it sounds like you're saying, let's ride this train till it goes off the cliff. How is well, that? I don't want it to go off the cliff. Obviously, I don't want to go off the cliff. I think many of these uh, many of these issues um, will. If you fight back, if you if you push back. Um, it, it will, uh, we will reach some kind of, uh, let's say an agreement where it will try, it will, it will stop the, the impulse of these, of these things from, uh, from happening. For example, the abortion issue in, in 1973 or when it, when it was, or 50 years ago, when it was, uh, instituted, everyone said that that was an issue that was, it was a lost cause. No one, it was, it was supposed to be over with 50 years ago. Uh, that that hasn't happened. It's a it's a big issue in 2023, largely because of glass grassroots actions that have mobilized huge numbers numbers of people and changed the public opinion. So that today, you know, there are many polls say there there are well there there are 50 percent of, of Americans who are in some way pro life. Obviously, not to the degree I would want them to be, but they ha we have changed the debate. 
largely through our being engaged in the culture. And I, that's what I think we need to do. We need to stay in the debate, engage in the debate. It's not going to be easy. But um, the other side does have pro just as many problems as we have. And so I don't think I think we need to to fight it out. You it's possible to convince some liberals to maybe approach a neutral ground. Uh, sure, or and a lot of these liberals are also mugged by reality at a certain point, and they see that many of these these things do not work out, and they will they will come they will come over. I mean, it, it's it's it, there are just lots of examples of this. I, I think we we don't we can't see it from point a numerical point of view. Say, well, look at it from the point of view of numbers. Uh, numbers are, are important, but that's not what moves history. What moves history are impassioned people for a cause and that through the contagiousness of their passion are able to convince uh, whole, whole nations. Uh, that's how history has normally happened. And so it's not a popularity contest of saying, well, let's see what, you know, how, how much we can get one way or one on the other way. It's, it is who's more passionate for their cause. Marjorie Taylor Greene, good spokesperson, bad spokesperson. Some people have said, hey, important issue, but God, what a horrible person to bring it up. Or I've also heard, hey, she's truthful. She doesn't care what critics say. She's the perfect person for this message. <laughs> How do you stand? Well, I mean, I, I, uh, I think she has, she, she obviously agrees with some of the positions that I hold, especially abortion the transgender, all these these issues. But at the same time, um, she is libertarian. Uh, she herself is divorced. I mean, she's not a family person. Um, she doesn't embody all the what, uh, you know, the the uh, ideas of Christian civilization that I would hold true. In, and so and much to the contrary. Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene says, hey, we need a national divorce because we can't get along. And in response, the newspaper said, oh, Marjorie, we don't need a national divorce. We need marriage counseling. There was a famous Utah governor who said we need marriage counseling that was reprinted in about 25 to 35 newspapers, yet no one defined it, which I found odd. Here's the solution. Mm -hmm. It's an apple. Okay, what does that mean? I, I don't know, but it's an apple. There's the solution. So what is marriage counseling for 300 million people that are as polarized mm -hmm. as we are? and have had things like January 6th look like, who is the marriage counselor and how do they bring us all back together to a happy union? Yeah, I mean, I'm not the author of the idea of marriage counseling, but it is a, in a certain sense, um, kind of, I don't think it's gonna, going to resolve the problem. It will mitigate the problem. It will, it'll put, it'll get people talking at least and not uh, and take away some of the edge of the thing. But I don't think it will resolve the problem because uh, you will, you'll probably not in, get into the most, the more, the deeper issues that are involved. It's not a political problem. I don't think it's an economic problem. It's a moral problem. And even now it's becoming a metaphysical or philosophical problem because we're dealing with issues now that are beyond, um, you know, is this good or bad? Is is it is is it or is it not? You know, am I a man or a woman, or is something? Uh, you know, problems of being, which are very very fundamental, and and those are things that uh, marriage counseling will work. Is it even possible to have marriage counseling? Who does this? I mean, who's the person right. who's going yeah, to go? Exactly. Hey, both left and right, you both need to listen to me. Right. Is there anybody there who could get both the left and the right to listen to them? And see them as a fair arbiter, right? It would have to be someone who would, um, who would, well, any nation that exists has to have unifying principles, and it would have to be someone who would somehow embody what few unifying principles are still uh, in 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 place in the United States. Um, in my opinion, the unifying principles today would be a vague moral uh, morality that uh, left over from from times of uh, times past. And the American dollar; those are the two things that unite Americans is to a certain extent. But you'd have to find someone who, in any way, some way, uh, you know, is is an example or role model. Uh, I think that would be very important to have a, a, a role model that would embody those things. Um, 
federalism. Yes. Is federalism the solution? Can we just devolve powers from the federal governments to the states and everybody's going to be uh, able to calm down? Well, I mean, that's what we pretty much have now. We have red states and blue states that have devolved uh, in many of these issues. Um, it will it will redistribute, let's say, some of the uh, some of the rancor or the uh, anger that exists. But it will also it will turn one state one state against another, one federal unit against another. So, I don't think it will. It will simply redistribute the problem, but it won't resolve the problem. I was talking to some liberals recently and they said, you know, yeah, the Democrats made some mistakes, but really the reason we have division is that there's a political party. The Republicans have mm -hmm. decided that they don't really want to play fair anymore. They want to start banning voters and rigging elections and questioning elections. And so um, the attitude of some liberals is uh, really the fault is all you guys. Um, maybe they did a couple mistakes here and there, but you know, you did the coup, you did Trump, you called stop the steal, blah, 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 blah. Is that a fair criticism to say that we're at this position of polarism now, 90% because of exclusively the people on the right? No, of course not. It's not Why really. Not? Uh, but I, I would say what's causing the polarization is the breakdown of the liberal order. Uh, liberalism as a philosophy is a political philosophy that was pretty much a result of the French Revolution and developed during the 19th century. And we have a the liberal is liberal regime in the European sense of the word. And what liberalism says is that you could you should be able to do pretty much what you want to as long as you don't hurt anyone else. And so it is very individualistic. It tends to destroy community bonds. It has all sorts of problems, but it also mm. does allow some a certain type of prosperity and allows uh, uh, free markets and and uh, and other things that that can be helpful, but this order is breaking down, and both the conservatives and the and the liberals are uncomfortable inside the fr the framework that now exists. The liberals saying, "Well, I want to do what I want to, even if it does hurt somebody, even if it does have consequences," and the conservatives are saying, "Well, I I don't want. To, I think there should be restraints." even though it goes against some of the principles of a liberal order. So that that is pretty much a, a lot of the fight that's taking place today. And so to try to, to force everyone back into that framework uh, probably won't work. Hmm. We used to have a, I'm 46, and I remember when we used to have a common belief that you had a right to own guns. Now, there would be a disagreement on how many and the type, but everybody kind of felt that. But we used to have an agreement on you had the right to not be spied on by your mm -hmm. government. Uh, liberals don't care about those things anymore. Right. That's just not, and those are in the Constitution, and they could care less. Right. So what we're already seeing where there's people who, the Constitution used to be something we all could agree with, and mm -hmm. even that's gone. I mean, in the last 10 years, it's just wiped out. I remember James Claiborne, the Democrat who nominated Biden so that he could win the presidency went on TV and he goes, uh, people just don't care about their right to privacy anymore. And he was kind of shocked while he was saying it. Um, but it was like, oh, damn. I remember that being a quintessential American right made us different from the Soviet Union and China. Now no one cares on the left. Let me ask you, uh, we're winding down. I want to ask you two more questions. Um the solution is for conservatives to fight back, get involved, don't just concede the culture war. What happens if this doesn't get better, if we don't come together, if the level of polarization as we are just continues in a straight line trend going as it is, and there really isn't a pushback trend? Where does this go? If, if there's no pushback? If there's no pushback and the way we are polarized now just continues the level of increase of polarization we're at just continues straight line up into the future. There's no real marriage counseling or return to federalism or winning or abridging the culture war by conservatives. Maybe they don't even try. Maybe they can't pull it off. What happens in the next 10 years? Well, definitely. I mean, it is uh, the the liberal side, the, liber the, uh, the side of the liberal order that does not like restraints is working toward a society without any restraints. 
And so any type of sexual relationship that is restrained is restrained should not be restrained. Any type of, uh, let's say, um, responsibilities and duties that people uh, should assume should not should not be assumed. So the, the 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 natural tendency is toward entropy, is toward a dec decadence, a decay, a destruction of the structures that are in society today. And that's largely what's happening. And that's why we're fighting back is because so many of the narratives, the traditional narratives that have kept our society in order are being destroyed. Uh, some of the concepts or the idea of what is a man, what is a woman, you know, all these things are, very, are now very, very basic. But when those things are gone, uh, anything can happen. And I, I, would, I, would, I would say that we would be headed towards probably one of the greatest tyrannies we'd ever seen in, in history. I will give you this. I know a lot of liberals and they're hardcore liberal, liberal, liberal. And then they have kids. Yes. And then the kid and they're still pretty, you know, I you know, I'm still kind of liberal, liberal. And then they go to one transgender story time. And boy, do I start hearing Fox News talking points. And I go, you you're liberal. What are you doing? And they go, I, 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 OK, but. You know, I'm I got my daughter and my son and I'm trying to teach them your little girl. So you do this and your little boy. So you do this, you know, peace standing up type stuff. And then someone comes in and starts confusing it. I'm barely getting these kids to understand this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen a lot of liberals do that. Yeah. Literally, the story I just told you goes literally like that. Mug by reality. And it is largely yeah. a, a clash between the liberal principles that they believe and, and the reality of what happens when those things go to a, to an extreme and want to just, and you know, they go, go to the extreme point of saying, well, I, I could be in what and do whatever I want. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, just something I've seen, not taken aside, just something I've seen a lot of people I'm liberal, I'm liberal. And then suddenly they have kids and they start seeing stuff and they start talking like Fox news and you bring it up to them and they're not even aware they're doing it. Right, right. When you bring it up to him, it's like literally those 1950s uh, cartoons where smoke comes out of the robot's ears because it cannot compute, cannot compute, cannot. Yes, 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 I, yes, I, yes. I've seen that a bunch. I'm not taking yes. sides. I'm just saying what I've seen, trying to be neutral. Okay. Yeah, last I, I call that a, a neurotic point. In, in, in a lot of these things are what I call neurotic points. They are internal contradictions in our systems that the short circuit cause code short circuits i mean this this one person i know she she still is she still believes in safe places and non-discrimination and the patriarchy's bad and all that but her eyes roll into the back of her head when she's trying to explain how she does support lgbtq but she really does not like transgender story time and she has trouble explaining it herself mm -hmm. even to herself mm -hmm. that's something i've they don't, they're, they're struggling with the, Absolutely. Um, which kind of backs up what you're saying. I'm not saying I agree. We're trying to stay neutral, but this is at least something I've seen that backs up your point of maybe liberals are going this way. And then suddenly reality smacks them right in the face at that moment. They might have. It some... definitely does happen. And it happens more and more, you know, when, when, the, especially when things go really radical and just cause these clashes. And that's the natural tendency of when, uh, of these of these ten of these uh, of these trends, they naturally tend to accelerate as as time goes on. And she's got one daughter and two boys, and she's trying to you know teach the boys don't hit your sister um, <laughs> because they're I you know I beat the crap out of my brother as a little boy. It was stupid. It was immature. Mm -hmm. Boys do this. You should not be hitting women, and you need to start teaching them that at an early age. Yes, and if you get it confused there's just some things that maybe they don't know when they're grown men and that mm -hmm. is a problem for all of us right grown men who do not know how to live in society are a problem for all of us right doing what you either. want as long as it doesn't hurt anyone often does hurt someone, someone. uh boys need structure or they turn into problems Absolutely. when they get away <laughs> uh and uh, a man without structure and rules and commitments is a dangerous, dangerous thing. I'll just put Absolutely. that out there, there. Last minute, last question. I want you to place yourself outside of yourself. You're a third party, you're watching this interview. You're not you, you're not me, you're a third party. 
you were watching this and we had a pretty, pretty good conversation. I really liked you taking some of the tough questions and giving some thoughtful answers. And you're watching this and you don't, you know, it's five days from now and you don't exactly remember everything we said, but five days from now, there was this one thing that the interview guest said, and you just can't get it out of your head. What is that one thing you would want the audience who you've never met to not be able to forget five days from now? Very good point. That's uh, <laughs> something you should have to, I, I would think it would be that um, I would want people to say that we need to engage the culture. Uh, it is to simply walk away from the, pro you cannot walk away from the problem. We need to engage the culture. If we don't do this, it will have drastic consequences. We need to keep it to, to be involved. That would be that would be the one thing I'd hope people would want to, would say. That was good. Uh, do you have any recommendations? Do you know anybody who might be willing to be part of an honest conversation like we're having here? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I'd have to get back to you on that just to see okay. what what they would be. Yeah. Okay. I'll email you in a couple hours a copy of the video. Um, if you have any recommendations, we want to keep the conversation going. I hope you found that this was not gotcha journalism. I did ask some tough questions, but I hope you found this was a fair. Oh, no, it's great. No, I have, I have no problem at all. <laughs> okay. This is a fair. Uh, we are going to do controversial questions, but we're not trying to get anybody. We're trying to get people to, to is what I really think. And then you, the public, are going to have to think for yourself based upon listening to a bunch of conservatives and a bunch of liberals. And I'm not going to give you the answer. You're going to have to actually <laughs> use this and come up with your own opinion. So, sorry. That's the way we're doing it here. Uh, John, thank you for being here. All right. Um, that'll end our interview. I will in, I will email you in a little bit with a copy of the interview, and I want to say thank you so much for coming out. All right. Anytime. I appreciate it. All right. God bless.